Welcome, everyone. This is the Ohio Writers Guild, and we are talking to, uh, and Chris, I have to make sure I pronounce your last name correctly. Is it Borja or Borja? Yep, you got it right the first time. Perfect. Borja, that's what I thought, and I've heard somebody argued with me the other day, and I said, no, I think it's Borja. So welcome, and of course, I have Sandy with me as well. She is my co-host, my co-mod. Um, and we've got some folks coming on already. I'm coming to you from Canal Winchester, Ohio. Sandy is in the Springfield, Ohio area. Uh, Leslie, Columbus, Ohio. And Chris, you're in Columbus as well. Am I right? Yep. Okay. And uh, Perry or Perry, not sure how to pronounce that one, in Columbus by Easton. Okay. Um, oh, Chris, Grove City. Oh, I didn't realize you were Grove City. Oh, you're closer to me than I thought. Yeah, I was in Dublin for a long time and just moved this summer. Uh, wow. That's why. I was thinking you were north. Okay, yeah. Ruth is Springfield too. Yeah, there you go, Sandy. Ruth's over in Springfield. So welcome. We're so glad that you are with us this evening. And uh, so I'm going to tell you just briefly about me and what the Ohio Writers Guild is all about. We have this free meetup once a month. And we turn it into a podcast. We meet up on Zoom, uh, like you see here. Uh, I am recording. And then we will put the recording over into not only um, our platform so that you can listen to all the replays, but we also put it in a podcast form as well. And that way you can listen just to the audio portion. Um, but a lot of folks like that. I, I have a tendency when I'm out doing my my daily walk or run, I do like to listen to podcasts where I'm not actually looking at a screen. And, uh, and as a matter of fact, for those of you that haven't checked out Clubhouse, check out Clubhouse. It's like podcast all day long. <laughs> you can listen to all these great conversations and you don't have to, you know, you don't have to have your face on or your hair combed or whatever. And you can, <laughs> you can just listen to great content. I, I got caught up in one this morning about short-term rentals and uh, the, the content was so good that uh, I, I, I finally had to force myself to leave Clubhouse so that I could actually get some work done. But anyway, it's all good. So uh, so if you haven't visited that and you like podcasts, that's a great place to get some wonderful information. So I do have the Kathy Binner International Academy and I am a passive income coach. And so what I do uh, in, in kind of on a sideline in my retirement gig is that I have written several courses, all different lanes on how to have passive income. And then I turn all of those into uh, a podcast format as well. So they're all out there. I'm on Vimeo. If you want to see the video back up, I'm on YouTube, if you want to see the actual uh, video there, if you like YouTube, and then I'm on Audio Boom, which is my podcast platform. And then it goes out to like, I don't know, eight more platforms once I post there. So it's on Spotify and Amazon Music and, and six or seven others. So you can find us just about everywhere. If you just go to kathybinner.com, and I am going to put that over in the chat as well. Uh, but if you just go to kathybinner.com and scroll down my homepage, you will see links for all of that. Uh, so that's the easiest place to find me and just click through and see, you know, what appeals to you and, and what you want to revisit or what you want to listen to or, or take a look at. And then at the end of the day, uh, I have put together some amazing tribe trips. And so for this group, especially, and I'm going to segue over to Sandy for this group, especially we have an actual, and, and for some of you that have followed me, and, and Chris knows this as well, some other author groups that we've been in, they have an annual conference. And so we're considering this our annual conference, and it is a writer's workshop, and it is in over by Yellow Springs, over by Springfield, and Sandy is in charge of the writer's workshop, and I'm going to let her tell you all about it. There's still time to register. I did register. I didn't want to miss it this year. Last year, we were traveling, and I didn't get to go. This year, I jumped in, so I'm registered, and so check that out, and Sandy is going to tell you about that, and then she's going to put a link in the chat for you as well. So, Sandy, tell us about the writer's workshop. Thank you very much, always, for allowing me this little spotlight here. I am director of Into the Springs Writers Workshop. It's the first weekend in August this year. 
4th through the 6th at the Mills Park Hotel in Yellow Springs, right in the heart. You don't have to go very far to get the Yellow Springs experience. And if you don't know what that is, by all means, type in Yellow Springs, Ohio, and you can see it all. And we're right there in August, which is also prime time. Although, you know, there's never a day that I haven't been through Yellow Springs that people weren't walking around, talking, mm -hmm. chatting, cup of coffee or something in their hands and so forth. So it's an exciting spot to begin with and quite the center for well-known writers, not so well-known writers, comedians. If anybody has ever heard of Dave Chappelle, he grew up there, left and came back. And that's kind of his that's his route and is fast becoming his town too. And you, if you're into that and could do want to do a Dave Chappelle sighting, that's the place to go. Um, I started there in 2018 as an assistant. We we're in a little community center and uh, grew out of it. I took over as director after I was asked to be an assistant the first year. So I've been working with it since 2018. And last year I moved it to the Mills Park because I needed more space than what I was given, which is only 20, 20 folks. So now I've got the hotel, I, I can play with it as much as I want to really enhance a writer's experience. And my setup structure is, you're there the whole weekend in one room with the same featured authors. So they each have their unique take, nonfiction, fiction, genres, all that, but they also have to speak to everybody because in the, the basic root of all writing has a lot of the similar elements. And uh, that's what I look at. We zoom a lot to make sure we can be uh, diversified yet touching base together. And this year, uh, every year gets more and more exciting, I tell you. This year I have Jane Friedman. She's another one that if you've never heard of her, you should uh, type, type, F-R-I-E-D-M-A-N, Jane in your, in your Google it, and you will be amazed. She lives in Cincinnati, Ohio, so she's not far away. She one time was the editor-in-chief of a publishing company called FNW, and the Writer's Digest was under her umbrella. And then she advanced when she realized that print meet, print books were going digital, and that is her cloak one of many, but she is a foremost authority on things in publishing and the marketplace. My other guest is Jason Sanford. He's a science fiction writer, mainly. Short stories are his bread and butter, and he, his novels have been made him a finalist for the big science fiction fantasy awards, and that's the Hugo and the Nebula, and a lot of other awards he's gotten one year, a British magazine featured just his science fiction stories. He knows how to craft a short story. He knows something called Patreon, where if you, before you get that big book deal or an anthology deal, there's a way that you can make money every month by promising your subscription people a story or something else of yours. So it's a fascinating growth. The two of them are going to be amazing. And to have both of them in the same room from Friday of five o'clock until Sunday noon, well worth the cost of admission, believe me. It also includes Saturday lunch and both of them are more, like I said, you could take a breather and leave, Nope, they want to be in the same room. We're served in the banquet hall so you can get together. So if you're reticent or shy about asking your questions in a big group, you might be able to sidle up to one of them and ask your questions there because this is all about you, the writer. And their, their experiences are so interesting and broad. Whatever you're asking, if they don't have the answer, they will know it within seconds because they know how to find it. So I'll put all that information in there. Um, would love to see you there. Thanks. Sandy, thank you so much. Um, yeah. The website is very easy to, to maneuver. Uh, uh, Sandy is going to put that in the chat. And mm -hmm. it's very easy to maneuver around in the website and find what's going on to find the schedule, find out the, the cost, the price. 
Um, from there, you can even click through and get a hotel room right there in the hotel, mm -hmm. or you can stay off site. There is, there is some other hotels close by. And mm -hmm. if you felt like you wanted to stay a little further away and not right in the, the hotel where the, the conference or the writer's workshop is going on, you're more than welcome then to book something close by. And for Ruth, you can just drive over from home. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, good for you. Yeah. yeah. So so sure. that's that's perfect. I'm looking forward to it. It's listed also on the kathybenner.com under our tribe trips. And so please um, scroll down and check that out. So we are going to talk with Chris Borja this evening. Now, Chris and I, we go a ways back, don't we, Chris? Um, yeah. I remember, and I have to tell a cute little story. I remember um, I, I was I had salons. I had five different beauty salons and I worked in the salon industry for 25 years and I started to cut back. I knew that I needed to, I knew, I knew in my heart of hearts that I needed to retire and I was not quite 60, but almost I was in, you know, like 59 and a half. And I thought it's time to really start considering retiring. Now, don't tell anybody I told you, but Mark's a little older than me and I didn't want to make him wait terribly long for me to retire. And so I thought if I retire a little early, because he was already, and I thought if I retire a little early, then we can kind of get on with it, as I like to say. And and we certainly have. We, uh, we, we've since then purchased a condo in Sarasota and we fly back and forth and we travel all around and we're having a great time. But during that time of me deciding that I needed to retire and, and have a little more me time and work on my health and just, just you know, spend some more time with Mark and the kids and the grandkids. Um, that was a really tough time for me to make that transition, as it is for a lot of folks. And so I saw this advertisement where there was this event going on. And I decided to go to this event because I had cut back on my schedule a little bit and I didn't know what to do with myself. I was so used to being busy. And so I decided to go to this event and I go and I sit in the room and long story short, it's where I met Chris. And so that would have been 2015, 2016, somewhere in that range, maybe. It sounds about right. Yeah. And so then we would all go, you know, after the event was over, it was a morning event. We would all go to a local restaurant afterwards and have lunch. And, and that's where I got to know Chris. And, um, and I just, I loved everything about Chris. He, he had a great heart. He's got a beautiful wife. He's got a beautiful family. And now he has the most amazing business. And we're going to talk about that. But tonight we're here to talk about his book. And so for those of you that are listening, um, I already am published. I was in a uh, collaborative effort type publication where I was one of several authors and we ended up launching in September and uh, we launched um, number one in 13 categories and so on Amazon. And so I am very excited about that. Everybody says, oh, Kathy, that was amazing. You did great. And I said, oh, it had more to do with my publisher than it did me, but <laughs> because the publisher kind of knew what we each of us needed to do to make that happen. And Sandy, you're also published. How many books do you have under your belt, Sandy? I have uh, two uh, way back in my nonfiction years. Uh, okay. Two nonfiction non books, two biographies, one of George W. Bush and another one of a South America, Spanish explorer of South America, Francisco Pizarro. And okay. then I... And then I was drawn to uh, my first love, which is fiction. So I've been in that for a long time in short stories. Well, I want to write mystery novels. So just so you know, I'm hoping when I go to your writer's workshop that I can start outlining my first mystery novel. That's my yeah. goal. So we'll we'll see how that goes. So after meeting Chris and and working with him in this other organization and alongside him in different projects, um, he is now ready to launch it. Now, is this going to be your first book, Chris? Yep, the first one. Okay, so he's getting ready to launch. I can't wait to see it in print. And so give us a little bit of your backstory, Chris. Tell us about your journey. How did you even get to the point to where you and I even met at that other event? Yep, so my background, I was uh, always very shy and introverted. So now I'm, I run a networking group and my book is about networking. So it's a 180 degree 
turn. And, and that's what got me started with um, the other group that we met in is because we were both had we both had common interests and in just constantly growing and joining different seminars and uh, you know self development is is a big part of it. And so we definitely connected on on that end and just continue to grow as entrepreneurs as well. Uh, so that was my background and um, you know just just to share how shy and introvert because people don't believe me nowadays, <laughs> but. I was I was actually the kid that wouldn't raise his hand in school because I was so worried about what other people would think of me or what if I got the wrong answer or what if people uh, teased me. So I was very, very self-conscious, like pretty much most of my life. And uh, even in as I as I grew into adulthood and I was my uh, my best friend asked me to be his best man. And, uh, the, you know, I dreaded it the entire time because I knew the best man has to give a speech. And that's the first thing. As soon as he asked me if I would be his best man, of course, usually you're like honored. The first thing that went through my mind was like, dang, I'm going to, I got to give a speech now, you know? And so after the day yeah. finally came and, and the time to give the speech and I never stood up. So his cousin had to stand up and give a speech. So I share that just because sometimes people don't believe that I actually was that shy and, and, and timid back then, but um, you know, I made a decision to overcome that and started in the world of direct sales. So I went retail and had some background in real estate for a period of time and then wow. went into um, and then went back into uh, direct sales again. And that's where I found networking because I was looking for a better way to grow a business rather than uh, constantly chasing clients and getting on the phone nonstop and sending messages and phone calls. And it was just it never ends. And I, I didn't enjoy life. And so looking for a better way, I found networking and saw people doing it a different way, but I didn't understand it because no one ever taught me this stuff where I didn't understand how people were getting referrals and didn't have to go out and constantly call people to find clients. So I said, I got to learn this, this thing, whatever I got to do, which I did. And then after learning that, I opened my networking group about a year. So 2012 was my, my first networking event, 2013 started a group locally in, in the city of Dublin, just outside of Columbus. And then we started expanding and, and growing. Um, I started uh, teaching people how to network in 2014 casually, meaning that just teaching people around the room. And then I eventually did a workshop and and had everyone come together and just said, hey, if you want, I'll- And that's you. about the time that we met, I think, was when you right. were you were still doing it kind of casually and you were just getting ready to launch something. Yeah, who was it back then? I think it, it. I didn't have the intent of it being a business. I didn't say, "Hey, I'm going to start a business teaching people." I just didn't want people to be as uncomfortable as I was. So I started <laughs> helping them, and then all of my workshops initially were free, and then eventually started charging. And everything that I've done now is started as a free gig, and just trying to serve and help. And then they all turned into to businesses. And and Chris, that's what we have in common as well. Now, um, it could be that uh, when I think back, that's probably part of our teaching also in that group where we met. Um, that was part of, of, of the system that was put in place was that, you know, you, you start first and get clarity second. And so when you start, you start doing some free stuff. And then as you get clarity, you get the confidence to start charging for some of those events. And that's also how I got started. Uh, once I left the salon industry and started coaching and, and creating masterminds, that's exactly how I got started is I would do a free five session mastermind. And then it just, it grew into these paid events that we're doing now. So, um, so anyway, for those of you that are listening, if any of you are um, pondering how you can get something off the ground, get something launched, uh, get a hold of me or get a hold of Chris and, uh, and, and then don't forget to sign up for the writer's um, workshop with Sandy. So I think we've got a great team effort going here tonight. So I really love that. Um, now I've, I've watched you and you've put together these events. And so, um, we're, we're going to talk a little bit more about, um, the, you know, the message for your book, but just so the folks kind of get a feel for what you're doing, give us an idea of what a couple of your events were looking like and kind of where you were in that space before you ever even thought about writing a book. Yeah, so I started hosting networking events, just bringing people together. And I saw a lot of value in people, just people themselves. Uh, not even selling them anything, not selling a membership or anything, but just being around other people. And I saw the, the the value that happens when we learn to collaborate 
and appreciate each other's differences and strengths and weaknesses and be able to partner together. And that was the, the start of it, just creating a space for people to meet. And that's our, our goal is to provide a place where people can not just meet because it's hard to find places to meet nowadays. Like, do you just go online and message somebody? Do you just call them up? Do you just walk up to somebody on the street? So creating a space where people can intentionally meet and everyone there is open to meeting, which is a good start, easy, easy, because everyone's there for a reason, uh, but also to create a spirit of collaboration. And that's something that we do very intentionally. We create a space where people right from the beginning uh, understand how to collaborate and how to get to know the person behind the title, behind the profile, behind the business, and get to know who that person is, because that's where the magic happens. That's where you can really connect. And that's usually where the the uh, deep relationships are created to where it creates that trust of, you know, and somebody can send referrals or become clients. Uh, so that was, that's really the um, goal. And of course, to, to be fruitful and to be able to actually grow and, and to grow both uh, personally and also professionally, you know, through the relationships that are created, you know, we can all complement each other as we get to know each other. We're, we're, all of us are way more similar than we are different so um, being able to create that space for people and that's and that's what it looked like and then it started with just six like i think our first event i called everyone i knew i literally was texting everybody hey what are you doing tuesday i'm running an event i wanted to... and then after the first few people said yes uh, now i was on the hook because they were actually coming now i had to have other people there for them to meet or be three of us there so i was i was on the hook so i i just had to go all in and got 20 people there and then it would fluctuate in some events we would only have six people and now our group has over 9,000 people between our Facebook and, and meetup pages. And we have, you know, very strong uh, mm -hmm. meetings and we're expanding across uh, central Ohio and also beyond. So big vision to create community all across the world. And that's why the, the book came into play to really get that message out there and help people learn how to do this thing called networking. All right. So when, what was your first thought process about writing a book did somebody say you should write a book and you were like nah or were you was it inherently in you thinking I I really want to write a book someday which one best best describes you yeah I think I, I've I've always known I had a book in me since I was a kid okay I, I just I just never knew had, had no clue what it would be about and why anyone would want to read my book. <laughs> all wrote. right. All right. For you listeners, how many of you have a book in you, but you, you, you haven't been able to either put it in a, in a way that you can visualize it or that you can even outline it. You just know that you've got a book in there somewhere and you're not even really sure what that's going to look like. Um, put a yes in the chat. Yes. You have a book in there. How many have a book in there? Let us know. I know I did. I, I definitely had a book in there and uh, gosh, um, how old am I? <laughs> 66 before I, <laughs> I launched my book. So it's all good. So give us a yes if you've got a book in there somewhere. So so that, again, you, you knew you had a book in there somewhere. You didn't know what you were going to write about. What finally made you decide that this was the subject, this, this was the book, this was the time, what was your motivational factor that was like, now's the time? Yeah, I think one of the, one of the motivating factors for me is just the fact that I, I know I'm going to die at some point, <laughs> and would want to leave something with what I've learned and experiences and things like that. So I'd, I'd want to have something to, to leave behind for people. And I know short people's memories are short term, and no matter how you impact people in the current life, we, we all get forgotten. And I felt like a book would be something that would be a lot more permanent that could stay there for generations. And uh, so a little bit of a little bit of a legacy. Yeah, yeah the legacy is part of it. Um, I had a couple of ideas for books. One was a personal story and, you know, stories of trials and overcoming different things. Um, and then I went back and forth with different topics. But the the. Uh, area that people really started to get to know me for and my branding really circled around networking and I didn't want to have multiple brands that were all in different directions because mm -hmm. that would be confusing for me and, and a lot of people so I decided to write the book on networking because that's where all like most of my efforts and branding was already was already at I get that now how did you know you were ready 
How did you know, again, that this is the time I'm ready to do this? How did you know you were ready? Because writing a book seems to be, you know, kind of a big deal. I, I you know, when I was approached, um, you know, like Kathy, we really want you to be part of this collaborative effort. And it's going to be all, it's going to be right up your alley. It's going to, you know, my book, it, the title is called To Speak, Lead and Impact. And they said, we want, we want you to write your story, you know, how you, you know, the, as we like to call it the rags to riches story, you know, how, how, where were you and how did you finally arrive at, to what you're doing now? And we want to hear your whole story. And I was like, wow, that just seemed kind of overwhelming, um, you know, at, at first glance on, you know, how am I going to put that together? You know, I'm not a writer, you know, how am I going to put that together? So what was your thought process and how did you know you were ready? Um, I think so. I would do a lot of writing just basically on social media, just creating okay. little short things here and there. Um, as far as knowing I was ready, I, I, I started 2017 on the original book of my historian, and it took only a few months to say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to focus on networking about, you know, several months later. So it's really been about 2018. And then I wasted uh, four years <laughs> going back and forth over it. And, and I started writing it. I had, I had um, almost 40,000 words written. And then I ditched the book because I didn't like the way it ended. And it just wasn't feeling right to me because it was, I, I talked about the philosophy of networking. I talked about mindset. I talked about breakthrough uh, you know, things like that. And then I got to the end. I was like, okay, where do we go from here? And, and I was like, how do we, and cause it wasn't authentic to me to say, okay, here's how you convert that relationship into money and convert it into a sale. And it just didn't seem like, like I just got stuck there and I'd never finished part three. So it was like three parts. And then the third part, I just didn't have motivation to finish. It, and I didn't know why at the time. And it, it took, um, it took a while to go through that. And then I said, you know what, I, I do all these things and it's like second nature, but I never stopped and slowed down to think of the processes that I go through and the steps and the framework that I actually do and follow, but didn't realize it because it was second nature. So when I stopped and I said, okay, if I was to help somebody brand new, that was like, I was, you know, years ago, what are the steps that I would tell them to do if I had to just give them a set of steps? And that's how I came up with a seven step formula. And then once that became clear, then it became a lot easier. So the next step from there was outlining it and, and okay. creating the pieces of it. Wow. I, I love that because again, a, a lot of folks, that's, that's what they're looking for is that formula. They're looking for that step-by-step -step process on how you got there. So I, I can really appreciate that. And it gave you clarity. But what, the one thing that I noticed is that you started first and you got clarity second. So for all of our listeners, that's a lesson for all of you. Um, start first, go ahead and get started because you can't see what's around the corner until you get to the corner. So you have to start first and get clarity as you go. And, and it's okay. It's okay to back up and fix it and work on it and, and maybe take a different direction. And it's okay to go down the wrong path and then realize you took the wrong path and to back up to that crossroads and, and take the other path. It's okay. But you have to start or you're never going to get that clarity. So, Chris, kudos to you for starting and getting the clarity on where you wanted to go with your book. Now, now you, you're starting to write. You've got your seven steps. You've got your formula. How did you make time in your crazy busy schedule with a family and a business? And I've seen your calendar of all of your networking events. How did you find time to write? Yeah, that's that a tough the, that's yeah. a tough one for a lot of our listeners too. Yeah, that was the excuse I always had because I would say I would write later and of course it's like saying I'll go to the gym later you never you're not, you're not going, you know. <laughs> no, you're just fooling yourself. <laughs> and I wouldn't wake up early enough to to work on it and it wasn't good time. So it's just a matter of understanding my own, you know, body clock and cycles and when I'm at peak and stuff like that as far as focus. And I realized, okay, morning wasn't it and late night worked pretty good. But the, I realized that how I work is I, I have so many things going on with multiple businesses and family, like you said, and, um, and, and new ideas constantly coming up. So I don't know if any of your listeners out there have that happen to them where they just have like a new idea popping up all the time. So that's me. And that's the burden that I had. But I had a friend that 
um, offered to, uh, to, to have me stay at her place for a, a, a writer's retreat. You know, she has a really cool place up in Mansfield. And so I put me up in one of their cabins with my wife. And so I, I just stayed in there. She gave me 10 days to finish it. So how long do you need? I said 10 days. So I just scheduled a block of 10 days. And I knew like three months in advance that these 10 days, that's all I would be doing. And just staying in that cabin and, and writing. And um, the way, I, again, I think a big part of it is awareness of knowing what works for you and what doesn't. What doesn't work for me is stand, staring at an empty page because it just stares back. And then um, we get in a staring contest and nothing happens and because I'm, I'm thinking I'm in my head. And then as I write, I read from the starting again to see how it flows. And then that takes forever to just get through a couple of pages. So what I did is um, I did some of it originally by doing the voice to text, you know, where mm -hmm. the computer will come, will, you know, I will speak it. And I knew all this stuff. I didn't have to do a lot of research because I was basically sharing things I already knew. And so that worked well for a little bit. So what I did is I, I had my editor um, that was going through the original copy. And I said, this is just too much work to like, tell me to fix this and that. I didn't even like it. So I scrapped the whole thing. I scrapped the whole book. And then I took one day and uh, went on Trello, like a management project management type thing. And I just put the outline and I just put, here's what I want to do. Here's what's under this. And I spent a full day just creating topics and the seven steps and the topics under each and then when I got under each one then I literally instead of her editing me after I did it I said why don't we just do this together and so I just paid her to like just be there and type the stuff as I was speaking it so I literally just dictated the book and got all like all 40,000 words done in nine days um, and we just went from one chapter to the next and then I just finished the editing process yesterday or two days ago um to, to i've finally... seen your cover yeah uh he had a he had a, a thing on on his facebook page or group where we could vote on his cover so I, I got to vote on his cover um give us that platform that you used again it's called trello spell that for me t-r-e-l-l-o l-l-o okay for so for those of you that are looking for uh, a way to do a little bit of mind mapping where you want to get some ideas out there um that's one option there's lots of of writers platforms that you can purchase and i'm thinking trello has a free version am i right chris or do you know yeah i think it has a free like try for free and see how it works mm -hmm. and then yeah, yeah so it's 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 worth a look so i put it in the chat in case anyone is is interested in that so now that we know oh, go ahead sandy i was going to say you Chris, you brought up a really good point to add to uh, an author, a potential author's bag of tricks and trying to get the book or the story done. And that is taking a few days and getting away from the normal lifestyle, if you can at all possibly do that. Because even some of the professional authors with the multi-million dollar offices that they can work out of will sometimes just slip away for a few days. Mm -hmm. I've done that. I've created, I've held, whew, I don't know how many writers retreats I've organized for writer friends. And um, I personally find the cheap way out. I cat sit for two of my family members while they're gone. So I take over their house and I do nothing but write the whole time. Isn't it amazing, Chris, where, how much you can do it when you're away from home, if you have an opportunity to do that. That's a good, that's great. Yep, I agree you. with that. Yes. Yes. And and Chris, that is a, a, a good idea that you did that. And look how much you got done in nine days. Yeah. And uh, now what works for me, because I, I don't know, maybe I'm a little bit like Chris, where where he mentioned, if you recall, that he had to go back and read to see how it was yeah. flowing. So he could like then do another paragraph or two. And, and I catch myself going back and reading and okay, then I can do another. And, it, yeah. and you're right. It, it cuts into your time because you're almost kind of editing as you're writing and that that really is is something that that will put the brakes on and so what really works for me and uh, and chris had mentioned this as well is i take my phone and i i have my google docs um in my phone uh and it's just part of g of, of your gmail account your whole you know google account and I open up my Google Docs and, and hit the little keyboard and the little microphone comes up and I hit the microphone. And then when I do my daily walk, I can walk and talk because I'm out away from everyone. And I think what happens when we're writing and we, and we have that 
need to go back and edit, we're thinking about when somebody's reading this, what are they going to think? You know, Mm -hmm. oh, maybe I better not write it that way because, you know, what's somebody going to think? So if I'm just out talking, nobody can hear me. I'm out away from everyone. I'm maybe out on a, on a hiking path through the woods somewhere and there's no one around. There's no one to tell me that I said it wrong. <laughs> there's no one to tell me that, that, oh, that's not how you say that, or that's not how, that's not the proper thing, to, the proper word. And I just talk into my Google doc and it, it just gives you one big document, but you know what? Then I can sit down later and, and edit And I've got the whole story out there. And even if I kind of um, copy and paste some of the paragraphs around a little, I've got the story out there. And then sometimes I can open up a second document and maybe I put something in prematurely in the storyline and I can copy and paste it over to another document and flag a title to it. And now I still have that story to remember that I want to, you know, weave that in maybe a chapter or two later, but that works really well for me. So I don't know if anyone else has done that, but that works really well. Um, Irrelevant question for Chris, what fish does he have? Oh, he saw your aquarium in the background. Um, He has, is, is it platy? in my 20 gallon tank. He happened to see your tank back there. Yeah, oh, so what What fish? Oh, so I have a. I have two clownfish that swim in the anemone. I have a sailfin tang. I have a engineer goby and a pseudochromus fish. So I have five in there, plus all those snails and uh, and uh, hermit crabs and other cool stuff. So it's a, it's a reef tank. And so you see how he spells his name there on his little Hollywood square. Uh, He has a Facebook page and you can actually see some pictures of some of his uh, fish. He posts some of those pictures occasionally so you can check it out. So thank you for asking that. I have an Instagram page just for the fish tank too. Oh, there you go. There you go. Instagram. There you go. Yeah. I, I knew I'd seen the pictures somewhere. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So now let's segue and talk about what your actual, uh, you know, the actual topic of the book and what your book is about. We know you mentioned that it, it was, you know, the formula, the seven steps. Give us a little bit of a taste on what those seven steps are, Chris. Yep. So the, the seven steps are designed to provide guidance. It's a it's a roadmap. So it's a journey that people can go on. Uh, oftentimes, like when I first started networking, I just didn't want to be uncomfortable. I wanted to get customers, but I didn't want to be uncomfortable. I didn't want to say stupid stuff, you know, which where how do I start the conversation? How do I continue? And uh, many people through the years, I realized that many people have that same challenge and struggle. And that's where all the focus goes is like, they just want to be comfortable. But then I also see people that are perfectly comfortable networking. It doesn't mean they're getting results through their networking it means they just like talking to people and they're good at it. I said, so there's something missing. And so when I created the seven steps, it, it starts from clarity, understanding what your value is, understanding what your offering is. What are the pain points that your clients have? What are the solutions that you offer them? Who are, uh, who are other people that can help you accomplish your goals who are they what are their titles what roles are they in so with with networking it basically bridges the gap that no matter what is keeping you from your goals whether it's knowledge whether it's skills whether it's finances whether it's time people are always the answer anything that you're missing can be bridged by somebody and so that's what networking does all about building it's not about making a sale it's about understanding the whole concept of networking so uh, the seven start step starts with being you know clear having that clarity uh, second step is having the right mindset understanding what networking really is so the analogy i like to share is like playing cards but instead of us playing against each other you know where we don't trust each other we're hiding our cards so we you know somebody can't see and get an advantage you know if i ask um you know if i ask sandy for uh, you know, hey, Sandy, let me see your card. She's going to back up and hold it even closer because she doesn't trust me. So how do I change that? Well, if I turn my cards around and say, hey, Sandy, do you need any of these cards and offer that first? Now she's going to lean in and look in and say, oh, let me have the two and the three. I'm like, I don't know why she needs it, but I don't realize she has a four, five and six and the two and three completes her straight. And for me, that meant nothing to me. So and that's how it is in real life is that 
we all have people in our lives that maybe they'd, they'd never be our customers, but they would be a great customer for Sandy or a great customer for Kathy or a great customer for Kyle or Leslie or Perry or, or you know everyone else out there. So understand these concepts. So having the right mindset around networking, um, it, it changes it changes a lot. And then step three is having all the systems and tools. So like Kathy just shared Trello in there, but there's a lot of other things like your calendar app and your social media and your website and all the different tools that you have yeah. available to build rapport, relationship, trust before you even meet somebody. And then so step four right in the middle is actually meeting people. And usually that's the only thing, like I said, that people focus on. I was like, where do I go meet people and what do I say to them? But that's in the middle. And the reason why people don't network more is because they're not comfortable. The reason they're not comfortable is because they're not competent and they don't know. Of course, you're not going to be comfortable if you don't know what you're doing. I don't want to be in the middle of the dance floor if I don't know how to dance. So yeah. you give me some lessons and maybe there's a shot that you can get me out there, right? So by yeah. the way, Chris, Chris did dance, by the way, for those of you that may have missed all that. Yes, he did yeah. dance with the stars. <laughs> yeah, another another thing I did where I, I, was, I was like completely out of my comfort zone and still don't have any rhythm, but I memorized that dance and I did great uh, just <laughs> memorizing it and got by. So um, yeah, so that's four is, is uh, actually meeting people. And then fifth is how do you build relationship when they're not purchasing your product or they're not doing business with you directly? How do you continually grow that relationship? How do you measure strength, the strength of a relationship to, you know, what level of ask you can give, what you can ask of somebody. Um, and then step six is creating your own personal brand, which we all have one, whether we like it or not. And some of our brands might be that nobody knows who we are. And that's the brand is that you're the unknown and that's the problem. So you get to create the brand that you want and, and, and also create your personal uh, your personal network. Now, when you create your brand and, and network, step seven is the end where you create winning collaborations and partnerships. And that's where the bigger wins happen for most people. But And that's where everyone wants to get to, but they, they aren't ready for it and they don't have all the other steps in line. And what that means is that when they have that opportunity, they either subconsciously sabotage it or they straight out blow it because they weren't ready and they're, they're not ready for that level of partnership. So by helping everyone to get there and build their own personal network, it's easier to get into higher level networks when you have your own, because it's, it's like if you have a really nice car and your friend has a nice car, you probably feel comfortable lending each other your car. Like, hey, let me borrow your car real quick. Yeah, sure. No problem. But if your friend has a beater or they don't even have a car and they don't take care of their car and then you they ask to borrow your car you probably won't let them borrow it. And I, I feel like it's the same thing with your network. If you don't have any connections and network, people will not trust you with theirs. But if you have your own, then they're more likely to let you into theirs. And they probably also want to get into yours. Maybe you have a nice truck and they got a nice sports car and you could trade on occasion. And it's a, even, you know, you enjoy it. Uh, so so that's that's step seven, but most people don't have all the other steps. So, that, so when I looked at, you know, things I was doing and broke it all down and, and then uh, created a, networking breakthrough academy where I actually got ahead of the book and actually taught a class on all of these steps which for me was confirmation to see people actually go through this transformation and experience the the change and and just seeing it in real life that gave me the final push to say okay this book is ready to go so i just like i said just 2 days ago i finished the final editing on the book and uh, as I went through it, I was like, this, this is good stuff. You know, this is like, I was reading it like it wasn't even mine. I was like, this uh -huh. is good. And so that made me excited. So now I'm putting together the book launch team and, uh, you know, have some pretty ambitious goals for this book because I see the role that it plays, not in just trying to sell a book, but literally changing the world by showing people how to appreciate each other, um, uh, each other's values and, and how to um, appreciate diversity and how to create community of their own, how to share and bring, lift other people up. And I can see where we can create these kinds of communities all across the world, which it needs because the world's all about dividing and separating and causing division and conflict. And, and, and that's not what is, is really happening. People really are more, a lot more connected than, than they realize. That's the thing we say is that we're all connected. Diversity is our strength and, and we're better together. And that's what we're actually creating a movement behind this book rather than just selling a book, you know, and, and, and equipping people to learn how to connect. And it starts with the business community. And, and just so some of our listeners know, and correct me if I'm wrong, you don't have to be selling something to network. We, we network all the time. 
you know, we'll go to a social event and we'll end up meeting new people. And you, you never know when you can add value to their life. And oftentimes they add value to mine and they don't even realize that they did. Uh, but just in conversation. And I think, again, it comes back to that confidence and knowing what you're worth and knowing what it is that you have to offer. And, uh, and again, Chris, you keep telling me that you were really, really shy, but I, I've not seen that part of you, but, but in a way I have, because I do know that, that you can be quiet uh, at times. And, and I think that's that personality, that shyness that's coming out. Um, but you have, definitely stepped up to the plate. So kudos to you. So we know what your book is about. We know why you wrote the book. And it, and again, we mentioned briefly about legacy and you said you early on in the, our conversation, you said, you know, I realized I was going to die someday and I wanted to, you know, put all of this in a book. Um, how strong of a part did that play in the fact that you wanted to get your systems into something that's published i think it's a it's a major uh it's a major driver for me and it's it's um it, it's the urgency that it puts because you know you you see people that pass and as you know you get older you start to know more people that pass away and um, we realize that we just really don't know when our time is up and i'm 50 now so i'm already definitely on the back nine. Uh, so I've got a, I've got a, um, you're on the back 50. Yeah. I get what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, back 50, back 50. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's, um, it, it's, it's something that did put a lot of urgency that I, you know, you just never know when your last day is. And so that I didn't want to be the person that, Oh, that guy knew a lot of stuff. And then I get forgotten. And it's not about ego or, or that. It's just that I've, I've learned so much that I feel I can actually make a difference in people's lives and, and actually change the world by helping people be better at, at connecting with one another. Um, so that's that's a, a big part of, of um, the driver is I don't want to die with this in, inside of me. I, feel, I, I will feel a big relief once I publish it and, it, and it's out there. Okay. Okay. Now, as you were writing the book, do, do you envision, we, uh, for those of you that are listening, you may or may not have been in any networking or any courses or any seminars that brought this up, but we often hear about the avatar, our, our person that we're writing to or selling to or creating for. Did you have any type of an avatar or an image in your mind of who was going to be interested in, in buying this book? Um, yes and no. It was something that was really challenging for me because a topic like networking, I see the universal application to so many different people. So I couldn't just say it was like this specific person, age this person and lives in this area because I feel like it was it's it's a lot broader. So I, I was honestly, I was really challenged with that. But I did come up with uh, an avatar of sorts because I thought of a person for a good chunk of the book a person that was new that that attended our networking events and said, hey, Chris, how do I do this? How do I get started? And I kind of visualized what would I need to tell this specific person that asked me, Chris, how do I get started in this? I, I see potential in it. I want to I want to do this, but what do I need to do? And so that so I did, in essence, use that, but it wasn't what a lot of people do where they have like, oh, it's somebody, you know, male or female and this age range and this is their profession and this is their income. Um, I didn't do that part of the avatar, but I did, in essence, by having a vision of somebody that was new to our group and what they would need to hear. Okay. I love that. I love that. And that's kind of where I am in my business is I'm all about the newbie, trying to help them take that first step and uh, get started so that they can gain some clarity. So yes, I love that. Um, I can't wait for your book to get published because I know I'm going to order some copies because I have some folks that are in my tribe that could benefit from your book. So I'm definitely going to have some on hand for some of my tribe to hand out. So I'm excited for it. So give us your plans for the future. Where, where are you going next with the book, with the business? What are your plans? Now, for those of you that, that may not know this as well, and we haven't talked about this yet, Chris also has a magazine. So tell us a little bit about what else you're doing and where, what, what your plans are for the future. Yep. So all of it really ties in together. So I have multiple businesses, but they all are 
interconnected and I can't get rid of one. So when people say to, you know, to, to niche down and, you know, focus on one area and I, I'm, I'm not doing it, I already acknowledge that, Hey, I'm not, I'm not going that route. I'm going wider. I'm not going narrower. All right, Chris, give me, give me, give me a fist bump right there. Give me a fist bump. Yeah, me too. I get it. Yep. I so get I'm, it. But, but it was a, it was a big thing because for so long I, I went back and forth in my head because of what I keep hearing. And then I've gotten so much clarity that I'm creating my own path and I don't need to listen to all the noise and distractions and the the newest things and do this kind of marketing, that kind of marketing. I'm going back to what I know is going to be timeless, which is relationships. And as things develop mm -hmm. on the digital end and all the different technologies we have, I use all of them and I love them. But the thing is like, no matter what method you use, uh, um, a, a person is always the one that makes a buying decision, no matter how much technology comes in between, it's always a person. And if we build relationships with people, this is a timeless thing that we're teaching. So I'm, I, I've, I've had people already tell me, Chris, you're going to run ads. Let's run this. I already said, I'm not running any ads for this. I'm, I'm literally not running any ads because I want to make a point that we can be successful without any ads through word of mouth, through organic, authentic connections and relationships. I'm going to run zero ads because I don't even think it's going to work, honestly, for me. Um, but I, I just, I'm not going to even pay for it. So I can say that I ran zero ads and did all this stuff. So future, uh, just to um, share like the, the ecosystem that the book falls into, you know, I recognize that books themselves don't make a ton of money unless you make a lot of sales. There's a, you know, there's a, mar a margin on it. You got to sell a lot of book to make a decent uh, revenue. So I had the course and I did that. So that's, you know, that's uh, a revenue stream. Okay, so give us the name of the course. So the, the course is Networking Breakthrough Academy, and, and that's the same as the website, networkingbreakthroughacademy.com. And the, that's based on the seven steps. It's a 12-week course that I take people through an experience to have transformation every single session uh, on each and every one of these steps. Uh, so, so that course, so in the book, the book is going to be a way to, to grow the business with the book at the center. So the book sales are great but I'm not really planning on living off of the revenue from the book, but what it creates and the training and the impact it makes on everyone is really what it's about. But in the book, people will want to go deeper and experience this so they can take the Breakthrough Academy class. Um, the other thing that I'm doing is focusing on opening keynote speakers presentations. So instead of a keynote, I'm going to do the opening keynote, the one that starts a conference. So if you've ever been to a conference, you know that a big part of why people come is the connections that they make at that conference or that summit or that event. But unfortunately, no, most people don't know how to network. And by me being first, teaching them some concepts about networking, helping them understand and, and have a process to not just meet somebody comfortably, get to know the person behind the titles and actually connect on social or stay connected, make an actual friend. Imagine the impact that that makes for the rest of the three hours or three days or however long that event is. So it provides a lot of value to the participants, the organizer, the sponsors, the speakers, creates a whole new level of energy where people, um, if you've been to conferences, you know how it is. You sit in the aisle and you don't even look at the person next to you. You get to be with, you know, three days and you don't know anybody around you. But once we break the ice, so I'm going to do opening keynotes. And from the opening keynotes uh, I'm, is where I'm going to get people that would be interested in hiring me to train their sales teams. So nowadays, you know, people don't answer the phone, they don't respond to messages. It's a different world. And so if I can help them and their sales teams to actually learn how to connect with people, to be ambassadors in the community, to where their brand grows as part of the community mm -hmm. growth, that's going to pay a lot more dividends. They're going to reduce their turnover. They'll get better people. They'll have more results. They'll have more referrals without cranking through sales reps. And so that'll be my high ticket item. So the strategy behind it is the book gets me on stages and the stages will help have people coming to me and say, I want to hire that guy that's on stage to train our team because it's it's authentic to what I train. I don't want to cold call into a company and say, hey, here's the services I do. I can train your team and I can do a real good job. And, you know, here's how I'm going to, I don't want to. Because they don't know you. They haven't, they haven't heard your voice. Yeah. I, I, I don't, it's the hard way to do it. I said, so why don't I just get on, get the book done, get on stages because I wrote this book and so I can help, you know, instantly make an impact on their event. And then from there, people will come to me and say, you know, I want you to train our sales team. What you just did for this group, I want you to do that for us. And so using the the, the book as influence, then we also have a, a virtual and hybrid event production company that we, that we uh, launched during 
pandemic and helped a lot of organizations. So even that was kind of like an outlier in our ecosystem of networking. So we're even bringing that underneath the networking. So for, for conferences that want to have a strong networking component to their online uh, hybrid portion of it, instead of it just being a video stream, where all of the participants online can network with each other the same exact way that people in person are using technology to sit at virtual tables and they can click and navigate and move around and have that same experience as the people that went uh, in, on in person. So even that has all aligned. So everything literally is lined up now where in the past, it was like a million different directions, but like Kathy said earlier, it, it, it's, it's taking that action and then gaining clarity from that action. So it was for me being so dispersed and all these different things happening, then all the clarity comes in and now I have everything aligned to where it, it looks like yeah, it might be crazy enough to work. It sounds good, you know? <laughs> well, and, and the irony is, is even though it's a lot of things, it, it is all in the same niche. Yeah. It really is. It's all about networking and building relationships. Now, I do want to mention, uh, again, for, for our listeners that are on board this evening and for those that are going to come back and, and watch the replay or are going to listen to the podcast, um, for that virtual and hybrid conference platform, you do have a little coffee meetup once a month, am I correct, where they can kind of test that out and see what it's like. It's it's really a pretty sweet platform once you're on it. Um, when is that particular coffee meetup? Um, that one is actually coming up this Friday. So we do it every second Friday. We call it Connected Cafe. It's a virtual coffee shop. So you just drop in and we facilitate the conversations meet at a center table and then have everyone break out for one to one so you'll just look you know see who's who's out there so i see kyle and perry so let's say i'll, I'll meet with leslie so hey leslie we haven't met you yet you want to meet for a one to one and then we both click on a table and now leslie and me are sitting at a table and then kathy and kyle like hey kyle i, don't, I haven't had a chance to meet you real well let's get to know each other so you click on a table and now you're at a one to one so it's like a, a zoom chat but each table is a separate uh, chat. So it, 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 it simulates what you would do at a, at a coffee shop, except with a lot more privacy, you know, and you're at the company yeah. in the comfort of your home. Yeah. I've been on a couple of conferences that Chris has been the behind the scenes person. And he, this is the platform that he uses even for a large conference. And it, it really works well. So if you get a chance, uh, put it on your calendar every second Friday, connected cafe, 8 a.m. Eastern time. Yeah. Eight to nine. Yep. Eight, eight to eight nine Eastern, Eastern time. time. So mark that on your calendar. And uh, Chris, where can folks actually connect with you if they want to look up some of your products and services? Yeah, best place is to go to my website, which is www.chrisborja.com. And the spelling is up there. So B-O-R-J-A. Uh, if you go there, it actually has links to all of the thing. It has links to Borja Virtual, which are virtual events, has connected networking group. If you want to come join us and, you know, uh, be part of a community and grow together, we'd love to have you. Um, you know, you'll you'll have information there on Networking Breakthrough Academy and, and I'm adding the speaking services and sales training, um, you know, here over the next couple of weeks, as soon as this book is is done and out of my hands, then I can yeah. work on those landing pages. But uh, all right. First things first. I love it. When do you launch? When does the book launch? Uh, March 15th, we have a big book launch party, which I want to invite all of you to, um, number one, to be able to meet, network. And I think it'll the way we're doing it could potentially be a good model for you that you can that you can follow after. So uh, I have a, a book launch team that I've put together and um, I have pretty ambitious goals to, to hit Wall Street Journal bestseller list first week and um, putting together the, the book launch team right now. And we'll have, you know, probably hundreds of people on site, another couple hundred people online. So really planning on a, on a big book launch for this. And um, yeah, for any of you that want to come out and maybe get ideas for your own book launch, or, you know, I'm, I'm open as far as sharing whatever I'm doing. I'm not, you know, like, I'm not going to tell you that, you know, whatever I know, if I can help, I'll, I'll help you. So feel free to reach out to me. I love it. And correct me if I'm wrong, the name of the book is Networking Essentials for Success. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yep. And that is very similar. You know, like I said, with my writer's workshop, I'm working with diverse guest art authors, but they kind of have to speak the same language. And one of the things that struck me was there a lot of 
fiction writers are told that they need to establish themselves. They need to be networking. They need to have their brand or however they're going to present themselves long before that book gets out there. And they're kind of lost because, uh, wait, wait a minute, how do I solve myself as an author if I'm not really an author yet? And here you're talking about that already and, and how you gather who you probably already are. You just didn't know all those pieces that go together. So that would really work for a lot of authors who are being told that. And the fact that you're saying, you know, chop back, you know, cut these things out and kind of focus on things. Well, probably 10, only 10 years ago, a lot of writers were told, do not write in any other genre but one so people can connect you with that genre. Well, that meant a lot of pen names or some letting go of stories that they wanted to write. And now it's really all about you the writer and once they glom on to liking you or how you speak or how you present yourself they'll buy whatever you write so it's just it's just fascinating how a lot of what almost all yeah i'd say all of what you've said is so applicable to the fiction writing world it's just amazing just amazing yep. well and, and one thing artists, yeah uh, yeah to to help authors because i see so many struggling authors and i'm <laughs> I mean, this is my first book, but I understand connections and, and networking and I see yeah. opportunities and uh, sometimes non nonfiction, I mean, fiction authors think that, oh, well, you know, maybe that's business. So it's a different, yeah, it is different, but it doesn't take away the fact that networking will help. So I said, so for example, I was talking to one lady who had a children's book and I said, what are the lessons? And she told me the lessons, of, you know, about perseverance or, you know, the different lessons and mm -hmm. value and all that kind of stuff. I said, so well, first of all, if you're looking to sell more books, the, the kids aren't the ones that buy it. They don't have a wallet. They don't have a paycheck. They don't, they don't, they can't, they're not buying the book. So it is the parents that are okay. understanding the value of it. And as I said, what, what other, um, what other values would, would the parents appreciate that they would want to have their kids? They're, they're the ones making the decision for their kids to read, to read to their kids or for their kids to read it. But also what other opportunities in schools to teach the lessons that they're trying to get across or to part so, so when i talk about like that step seven of partnerships and collaborations what if they created a, a partnership with a school district or a company even to teach something that's elementary and something we're trying to get to our kids yeah. but we forgot as adults i mean so there's so many applications that people don't think of but even doing that or even connecting with book clubs and doing a search on linkedin for people that lead book clubs and saying here i'm an author and not say hey here's my book buy my book because that's self-serving right but to, to build the relationships put value yep. into those groups to where people are saying you know when your book comes out i want to feature you i want to i want to read it i want to check it out but it all comes from serving first. And most people don't think of networking until there's a need. They do that when there's a job. Oh, I got a network. I need a job. Oh, I need to make a sale. Let me go network. Oh, I need to sell my book. Let me network. But if we can help people to understand that building a network is something that provides value and it provides the the, the confidence to, to market it, it gives you uh, people for feedback. It gives you people that can just be there to share life with you. Um, that's that, that's where I, I feel like regardless of whether it's a fiction or nonfiction author, they would benefit from growing their network because it, it's all about, you know, exposure and visibility and people that want to share the message, you know, because you can be the best writer, but if you can't get your book out there, the, the impact will be limited. So it's always about, um, it's always about, you know, getting more people to be able to take a look and the better your relationships are, the more people will take a look at your book. Yep. Well, one thing that I can say for sure, for those of you that are listening, either along with our call or are listening later and or watching the video later, is this guy's the real deal. Can you tell? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so join in, check out his website. Again, it is at www.chrisborja.com, the spelling B-O-R-J-A. And check out his website, everything we talked about, you'll be able to click through there on the website. And I just want to say thank you so much for being with us this evening. We ran over just a few minutes, but um, it was worth it. Sandy, thank you for being my co-host and being Always. on board. And so don't forget to, to click through on Into the Springs Writers Workshop. 
www.thepeacekeepers.com and click through there and get your ticket before there's no room left. She still has a limited room, even though she's got a bigger space. So be sure you click through and, and get into the writer's workshop, especially if you're stuck. Especially if you're if you feel like you're kind of stuck and you can't you don't know where to go next you don't know how to go forward the writers workshop is a great opportunity to get unstuck and so connect with any of us that you see on the call we're, we're all ready and willing and and happy to help you in any way and so just connect with us um, the replay you can go to kathybinner.com scroll down the home page until you come to the free ohio writers guild and click through right there and you'll find all of our replays so if you want to go back and listen to what chris had to say um, you can click through and listen to the replays so again thank you everyone and i appreciate so much that all of you were with me this evening thank you so much